Let's take a look at chapter 15. Uh, it's called exempt entities, so entities that are non-taxable. However, the big issue we have to deal with is when a non-taxable entity does certain things that are taxable. For example, doing lobbying or having some kind of a subsidiary or division that actually operates as a for-profit. So those are kind of the big two topics that we have to worry about for chapter 15. So a few exercises to review. Uh, the first one is Helpers Inc. is a qualifying 501c3. That means they're they are basically tax exempt. They incur lobbying expenditures of 250 for the year and grassroots expenditures of zero. Exempt purpose expenditures for the year are uh, 200000 Helpers elux elects to be eligible to make lobbying expenditures on a limited basis. Um, so for part A, what amount of lobbying expenditures is helpers allowed to make tax-free um, under the terms of the election? So um, it's a matter of kind of just understanding the rules. And um, as you go through the chapter, they show us the rules. And we'll, we'll talk about them here, obviously. So basically, it's 175, uh, 175,000 plus 10% of the excess of exempt purpose expenditures over a million dollars. Okay, so I'm just going to type that in for you. So basically it's 175. Okay. Whoops, let me do that differently here. Plus 175 plus 10% um, of excess above. One million. Okay, so that's basically the rule. So we can, with that rule now, we can kind of figure it out. So we look at first number is for sure it's 175. Okay, because they've hit that number, um, we can go back look at the question here. Um, they're at a million two right here. So we take a million two. I subtract the million dollars. Okay, and that's 200,000. So my answer is 175 plus 10% of this excess, which is, let me format this better, which is 20,000. Okay, so the answer is 195. The sum of those two numbers is 195, and that's the answer to A. Part B is what's the tax liability as a result of the election? Uh, so what we have to do is take the lobbying expenditures that they've used at 250, and we subtract the non-taxable amount, which is the 195. So they've spent 250. I subtract the 195. Okay, that gives me $55,000. So they're now going to be taxed um, on $55,000, and they have to pay 25% of that. So all you have to do is go to the 55, they pay 0.25, and we multiply this times this. 13,750 is the answer. That was question 13. Um, the next one is question 14, and it says here, um, Davis, an officer of a 501c3, receives benefits in the form of an overly generous health insurance plan. These benefits are inappropriate in the context of a charitable entity of this type. If the excess benefits are determined to be $35,000, Davis does not pay back the excess benefit to the organization before the first level tax is due. So in this example, it's an employee or an officer of a um, tax-exempt organization who is basically making more than somebody should be for the position they have of this type of an entity. And so because of that, um, there are some tax consequences to the nonprofit in this example. So it says here, apply the rules of intermediate sanctions, what amount of first level taxes are imposed on Davis and on the exempt organization's management. So first level is an excise tax. So the extra is $35,000 and that excise tax is 25%. So for Davis, it'd be 25% of 35,000. Okay, so I just erase this stuff here. And so the excess was 35,000. Tax is 25, do the math. And we get 8,750. Um, for management, 
it's 10%. So management is going to pay a tax of 10% of the 35,000. So obviously we can do the math on that and go 3,500. So Davis, 8,750, management, $3,500. Now the second part of the question is, um, right here, what's the amount of second level taxes imposed on Davis? So basically, if this doesn't get remedied, the second level tax on Davis, since Davis is the officer, it's a 200% tax. It's pretty insane, okay? So 200% at 35,000, okay? So basically, you're just taking it times two, 200%. So it's $70,000, okay? So if this does not get remedied, Davis would pay a tax of $70,000. So clearly, there is a a uh, definite reason to get that taken care of and get it fixed. Okay, question 15 is Rejoice Inc., a private foundation, existed for 10 years. Rejoice held undistributed income of 160 at the end of the 2017. Of this amount, uh, 90,000 was distributed in 18, 70,000 in the first quarter of 19. The IRS mailed a deficiency notice to Rejoice on August 1 of 2020 relating to the entity's undistributed income. What is Rejoice's initial tax on the 17 undistributed taxable income for 18 and for 19? And it's really a timing issue. And so the answer is, um, there's no excise tax because it was distributed. Um, it was just a timing issue that the IRS didn't know that it was. When they sent that out, um, you know, they maybe hadn't received the quarterly filing or the annual filing for the year yet and so they didn't know that so the answer is nothing it's all been distributed when they send that letter out it's been distributed so no worries um, so nothing to worry about right there um, for b we don't have to worry about the excel formula and then for c it says what's the additional tax for 2020 and the answer is none because everything has been dis um, has been um, distributed so nothing to worry about for that Okay, let's take a look at question 17, which is under the problems. Uh, so let's look at 17. It says, Wellness Inc. is a 501c3. They make a lobbying expenditure of 340 for the year. Charitable expenditures were 600000 for the first six months and 950 for the last six months. Determine the federal income tax consequences to wellness if it does not make the 501h lobbying. It does make the 501h lobbying. Um, so there's some negative consequences to not making the election. So that's what we're trying to figure out for Part A. Um, basically, it says they would not, they could forfeit their exempt status if they don't make the election, which would be a really big deal because now I got to pay a bunch of tax on just ordinary income and things like that. Um, second, they would have to pay a penalty tax, and the penalty is five percent of lobbying expenditures. So three forty. Penalty is 5%, so we have to pay 340 times 5%, which is 17,000. So for Part A, two bad things could happen. Lose the tax zip status and pay a $17,000 tax. For Part B, um, they do make the election, uh, which is what they should do. And um, what I do then is I calculate the lobbying um, non-taxable amount which is the lesser of a million dollars or the amount determined uh, from exhibit 15.2 from the text. So exhibit 15.2. And it just depends on what level you're at as to which, what, it's kind of like a bracket type of a deal, like it would be with um, tax percentages. So at the bracket that they are in, um, with the amount of money that they've, um, ex um, their expenditures, so they've spent 600 plus 950, which is a million five fifty. And so the answer is it's a lesser of a million dollars. Um, so uh, it's a lesser of a million dollars or the amount determined in exhibit 15.2 is what the answer is. And so at the bracket they're at, they're at 225 okay, plus 5% times 50,000. And that just comes from Exhibit 15.2. Okay, so um, that gets us to, oops, I don't think I did that quite right. That would be 50,000, not 15,000. Okay, there we go. So the answer is um, 
227 500 is my non-taxable amount 227 500 okay so i then multiply the non-taxable amount of 227.5 by 1.5 so multiply that by that i get 341 250 and that's the ceiling basically the maximum 341 250 um, you can see going back to the question that their expenditures were 340 um, so that's good news uh, however that did exceed the non-taxable amount so that's you know so it still is a tax to pay the good news is they didn't hit their ceiling but 340 is above the non-taxable amount okay the non-taxable amount is the 227,500 so they pay an excise tax essentially on that so basically they take what they did spend the 340 they subtract what uh, the non-taxable amount is that they're allowed to do that's the difference is 112,500 and they pay a 25 percent excise tax on that so they have to pay a tax of lobbying expenditures at 28,125 okay so the non-taxable amount is compared to the ceiling Good news is they were under the ceiling. If they were above the ceiling, it'd be a penalty. Um, and so we actually paid 340, which is higher than the non-taxable amounts. They pay 25% of that. Okay, and then question 18 is right here. Um, it says that Wish Inc. is a 501c3. They pay unreasonable compensation to Renata, the treasurer. Uh, her compensation is 600,000. Assume reasonable compensation is 500,000. Apply the rules of intermediate sanctions. Determine any tax consequences um, for Wish Inc. under that scenario. Um, so, some issues to think through here for Part A. Um, they've engaged in excess benefit transactions subject to excess, um, excise taxes on the amount of unreasonable compensation. Um, so, unfortunately for them, um, there could be some issues on the management of the company. And they'd have, they would have to worry about this, uh, potentially penalties that they would have to pay. Um, so both management and directors might potentially uh, be subject to some extra tax personally um, if they knew that this was improper. So we're kind of trying to figure if they knew it or not. They're trying to skirt some rules or whatever. Um, so the, the calculation, though, is the amount of excise tax on managers is 10% of the excess benefit with the statutory selling of 20,000 per transaction. So in this case, the excise tax is 10,000, so the extra benefit is 100,000, difference between these two, times 10%, which is um, $10,000, and that does not exceed the $20,000 limit. Okay, so $10,000 would be the tax consequence. For B, determine any tax consequences for Renata, and Renata is the person who's received the extra compensation. Um, so basically, she's going to get first level tax, and that's on the excess benefit of $100,000. She'll have to pay a 25% penalty on that. So $25,000. Um, if the excess benefit transaction is not corrected within taxable period, then it'd be a second level tax at 200%, and that'd be $200,000. So 200% times $100,000 would be $200,000, basically doubling it. So for A, the answer is 10000 For B, it's 25000 It's not remedied. Then it becomes $200,000. Okay, so those are the big topics for um, this particular um, chapter. So hopefully that makes sense. It's really just about non-exempts not being allowed to do certain things. Um, they can do lobbying up to a certain amount. Um, there's extra tax to pay if they do. They have to be worried about what they pay their people because of extra tax on top of that if they pay them too much or give them extra benefits or whatever that might be. Okay, so those are the biggest issues that can deal with with chapter 18.